AT&T deal with DirecTV bringing mobile technology into focus. Joining us right now to talk investments in the mobile space is Bubba Mararka. He is partner at venture capital firm DFJ. He's no stranger to the mobile space because he was brought into Facebook to create their Android platform. Bubba now invests in consumer internet and mobile technology. And Bubba, it's great to have you here. Thank you. Great to be here, Becky. Let's talk a little bit first of all what you learned about mobile when you were there, when you were at Facebook. What does it take to really be successful? Man, I mean, one of the amazing things of the time I was at Facebook was that <clears throat> I got there when it was 100 million users and, and got to see it grow to a billion. Okay. And, and the thing that I took away from that um, was really incredible around the scale of mobile. Um, I don't know if you guys saw the UN report this week. Uh, Three billion people are gonna, expected to be connected to the Internet at the end of this uh, year, and seven billion users are uh, people about are going to be connected via mobile subscriptions. That means in five years or so, there'll be more people connected to the internet via their mobile phones than there have ever been on the internet as of today. I, I mean, mean, it's that's just incredible that's amazing. to scale. I, I, and you must have watched at, at Facebook. I, it had to be something where you were just watching people pick up on mobile so much more quickly than anything that you had ever anticipated, I would guess. Yeah, no, I mean, the, the transition to mobile as the, the primary endpoint for Facebook was, uh, was dramatic and swift, and I think you're just now starting to see uh, a lot of other uh, industries recognize that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, even Facebook's latest performance is showing how dramatic it is with nearly 60% of its revenue uh, in the last quarter coming from the mobile. Is interfaces. that what you think is in part behind the AT&T Direct TV drive? You know, I think the, the AT&T Direct uh, uh, TV tie-up uh, is really an interesting idea um, as these, uh, you know, classic infrastructure providers are looking for ways to create more value and, and unlock spend as they uh, avoid becoming commoditized. And, and in the case of AT&T and DirecTV, yeah, I think there's this powerful tie-up where you, uh, all of a sudden, by offering television and mobile service, you can uh, offer potentially some really inter interesting uh, mobile video experiences. And, that, and that's really one of the hugest drivers of mobile consumption right now. Yep. Um, and imagine you know, a day where you can watch your NFL game on your AT&T phone without worrying about how much data you're using. I mean, you know, that would that be a killer scenario. That all ties back, though, to, to having really good content. And that has to be a game-changing uh, situation just for content providers, somebody like the NFL. I mean, how much more powerful, when you look at investing, do you ever look at the content side, or are you simply looking at um, how you get those platforms to people? Yeah, you know, it's, it's interesting. There's definitely an uh, ability to build very large uh, businesses uh, based on content. Uh, in mobile, the biggest content sector would be gaming. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you see companies like King, you see companies like Supercell. Uh, there are a, a lot of opportunities around that. The, the challenge with content oftentimes is kind of maintaining the scale um, once you get to a, a large number, you know, the, the concern of hit being hits driven. And, and given my training as an engineer uh, and as someone who built products and shipped software for nearly 15 years before I jumped on this side to, to invest at DFJ, um, I, I really do tend to focus on the, the platform opportunities opportunities um, just because they're they're, they're what I know and, and and I've seen them scale so beautifully well but what do you make of this whole area of controversy and what's going on in the Supreme Court given that we're talking about content and we're also talking about devices and, and how the internet is, is changing all of that yeah, you know, that's a, that's a great question. I uh, had been following along, like many, um, actually hoping to become a subscriber of the service. I'd, I'd cut the cord a couple of years back. You, and, you've uh, cut, once you've cut completely? Well, once uh, I was going to say, I, I cut the cord completely, and then uh, we had my son, uh, I became a father, and uh, we realized we were like, oh my God, we need as much simplicity in life as possible. And so we got back on, onto uh, good old Comcast. But I think the Arrow uh, uh, experience of just being able to enjoy television without having to worry about uh, kind of having a cable connection is beautiful. And I, and I think it certainly is indicative of the future um, direction. And it's just a question of what the right business model is, right? And Arrow is really pushing on the business model, um, kind of concepts of, of classical uh, content licensing. Um, and I don't know where it's going to evolve, but I think it's going to be a very landmark case. <laughs> uh, Bubba, one other question. Uh, I know I'm jumping around on subjects. We're going to be hearing later today, uh, actually on Squawk in the Alley at 11 a.m., about this, what a great name. <laughs> about this new device that, that Microsoft is making. Um, as a former Microsofter, this how, how do you think about the company? How do you think about the new CEO, the direction of what they're doing? 
Yeah, so, you know, I, I, I had a chance to be at Microsoft uh, very early in my career and was really formative and actually worked for Satya Nadella, Nadella um, in the Bing team um, when I was there. Um, I really am a big fan of his. Um, I'm excited to see some of the moves they're making um, to open up and embrace some of the killer franchises they have that aren't just um, kind of enabling technology. You know, for a long time, Microsoft was focused on, on the Windows platform uh, and viewed light through what is going to help or hurt the, the Windows platform. And, and you're starting to see them really think beyond that with the release of things like Microsoft Office for the iPad, um, the success of the Xbox. Um, I'm really uh, bullish on the, the, the potential for the company, um, but you know, I, I also think it's early days and it's going to be interesting to, uh, to see them manage this transition and, and become more um, less Microsoft platform centric and more user centric uh, and, and solving user problems regardless of what platform they're on. All right, Bubba, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no, it's great to be there. Talking about cutting his cord and no comp. I was going, la, 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 huh? Then he came back. Yeah, you but then he wants to get rid of it again. La, 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 la. Not listening to him. When we come back, we're going to...